It's like HD. I know it's very HD high def. Shit. Uh, if you want to huddle around, come, come hither, here. children. It's like yeah, I was half asleep. <laughs> Fuck you guys. <laughs> Mm, that is just crisp. I like drink that on a hot summer day. It's prepping you work in the garden. Oh, yeah. it's really hot. <laughs> it, are yeah. these not new? What kind of, I think they came out like oh, the I end of last summer. summer. Oh, no. okay. I honestly hadn't even heard of them until the girl I work with got them like last week and like before. She's like, I think you'd like them. <laughs> hey, everyone. Welcome back <laughs> to Forward Farming. <laughs> new season, new intro. <laughs> Just talking about alcohol. It's fine. <laughs> well, that was weird. Yet, yeah. why don't you go first? Let's start. start it on over. <laughs> hey guys, welcome back to Forward Farming. New season, <laughs> same us with some friends. Hashtag bless this mess. If you are a visual person, you might want to tune into our YouTube channel for this episode because we have quite the motley crew with us here tonight. (laughs) So uh, Becca and I are joined by, we have Tessa. We, oh, say hi, Tessa. Hi. You gotta be louder than that for the people in the back. Oh, hi. (laughs) Thank you. We've got Brittany. Hello. We've got Annalise. Hey. And then off in the corner, <laughs> we have Aaron. <laughs> Hi. Uh, Camera shy, the only one with the YouTube. <laughs> Makes sense. Uh, so today we are all kind of here this weekend. We are, we're getting together uh, for a weekend little girls trip. Um, we just kind of, not kind of, we rented a, a barn, a barn dominium. Is that what you call it? Yeah. What do you call it? Um, so we're kind of down by Madison area and, uh, we're spending the weekend together and just drinking and, and bullshitting. So and doing business and, and doing business. So writing it all, off. writing it all off. <laughs> IRS is going to be happening. Right Mary <laughs> Get in contact with Mary to find out this how you can write act, off. <laughs> um, so yeah, we wanted to get together, um, and, and just kind of talk about social media. And that's kind of what this whole episode is going to be about is just our experiences, what our goals are for our, our platforms and how we got started and why we're still going. So we've got a lot of, a lot of good powerhouses here. Um, so hopefully you guys can learn something along the way. Indeed. Should we just start with everyone kind of like introducing themselves? Yeah, we're going to skip our highs and lows for this week. Otherwise, um, it'll be like a five hour episode yeah we haven't talked in a long like a, time two months two months <laughs> probably yeah so yeah we're just going to jump right into it this week and uh it might be a two-part season a two-part <laughs> it might be a two-part season it might be a two-part season with the way two things are going episode two-part episode uh just so we don't bore you guys too much so who would like to kind of kick it off for us don't know Erin's just she looks she, she looks, looks excited ready. she looks ready <laughs> tell the people your name birth date social security number let me just slide the microphone address. over to you the, the usual yeah you know? yeah I'll leave that to the stalkers yeah. to <laughs> head out uh, I'm Erin Holber and I'm well I'm pretty much every social media platform at this point um yeah so I just farm with my dad in Indiana and run my own store what do you farm in Indiana? Just corn and soybeans. Did you say that? I don't think so. It's, <laughs> it's like the typical <laughs> corn belt Midwest farm. If you have to fence it or feed it, you don't need it. Oh, that's good. I've never heard that before. I heard that a lot growing up. What, uh, what's your favorite season on the farm? Definitely harvest. It's the most fun, perfect weather, and it's the easiest, usually busy season. What do you do? I run the auger cart. Um, I can run the combine a little bit, but kind of just works out where everyone likes their role that we have. How, how large is your farm? Like how many employees do you have? I don't want to ask like acres. Cause I don't know if that's a sensitive subject, but yeah, I don't really share acres. Um, we have my dad and then me and one full-time guy and then, you know, part-time seasonal help two or three guys. 
Has this been in your family for many generations or is it kind of relatively new? Um, my family has always farmed, but this particular farm is my dad took it over. Um, so first generation and also like six, like it just depends on which side of the family you go on. How long have you been sharing your farming journey on social media? Where did you start? What did you start with? Yeah, so I started with Twitter. So on Twitter, it's been probably four or five years and then just slowly added Instagram, um, Facebook, TikTok, and YouTube. Do you have a favorite platform? Definitely Twitter um, for the ag information. And then I really enjoy Instagram just because you can be more creative with it. But you're on YouTube quite a bit. I am. I feel like YouTube is the easiest way to reach people who have no farming background. So it's really cool to be able to explain some of that stuff to them. So since you're kind of the only one that has a YouTube, like how did you, because you have a pretty big following, subscriber count, whatever you want to call it. How did you how did you get that? Like, what did you do? What, what tips would you give to someone just starting out a new YouTube channel? I just kept posting two or three times a week. Um, and I got lucky. I kind of had one that just started gaining traction and hit like the main YouTube page a month in. Um, and after that, it just kind of blew up from there. It was kind of an exponential <laughs> trajectory. So it's kind of leveled off a little bit, but just something in it, something about it, you know, resonated with people. And is there something that you enjoy posting more? Like, I know you do like a lot of recipes and a lot of farm stuff. Is there something that people kind of gravitate more towards? I feel like people really like during like the busy season planting and harvest. Um, and I do the cooking videos because like, that's what I enjoy. And so if I'm not getting enjoyment out of it, I'll just get burnt out and I won't do it. So it's kind of a, a good balance of things. Yeah. I feel like that's kind of the same with anything. If you're not enjoying it, people are going to be able to tell and it's not as exactly as enjoyable. Well, like, what's the point at that point yeah. of doing it? It shouldn't feel like a job, another job. Right. So. And it's, yeah, it's gotten to that point and then it'll take like two or months off and then have to start over building that following again. Mm -hmm. So you've got a store, sorry, <laughs> no, it's just you've got your store too when did you start that and I guess why did you start it so I guess I started Heart of the Midwest two and a half years ago and I started it because the only ag shirts really available were livestock ag shirts and there was nothing really for row crop farmers um so I feel like I was probably one of the first ones that was focused mainly on corn and soybeans and I had the ideas for a while and I finally just like bit the bullet and started it not thinking it would like take off um, but it did. So I started putting out more ag shirts. And then once COVID hit and I couldn't get shirts to be printed on that were the quality that I wanted, um, I went ahead and um, pivoted into the boutique side as well to keep that up um, until I could get those shirts printed again. So where can people find your boutique at? Um, it will be in the bio of any of my social media um, profiles or at heartofthemidwestshop.com. Cool. Well, thank you. Thank you. All right, Annalise. Hello. Welcome it's back. Me to jump is me. <laughs> Third time's a charm. Kind of feel like I've been here before. Yes, you have. So welcome back. Thanks. Oh, you're not in the video. Oh. <laughs> So what do you want to talk about? Well, I guess all the same things. You just asked Aaron. Um, so your name, birth date, social yes. security. All my personal information. Oh, yeah. I forgot a couple things. Yeah, you did. <laughs> Aaron, get back in here. <laughs> good on the next round. Hello, I'm Annalise, also known as Modern Day Farm Chick or Mod Farm Chick. I'm a wife. I'm a dairy farmer. I'm a twin mom. I'm a skincare slinger. <laughs> I just all around drinking whiskey Bad drinking. Ass. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so when did you start your social media journey and why? Like what, um, what drove you to start doing I, all this? So I started, I don't even know how many years ago it's been, but I started because I always knew that sharing my story was important, but I was 
I was like, well, we got Jerry Carey. Like there's other people doing it. I don't need to. Um, but from time to time, I would share with my maternal grandparents who are a little more removed from the egg industry. I would share different like stories, blogs, stuff other farmers were writing with them. Um, and there was a particular blog post from Jerry Carey about animal abuse that my grandma thought was just spectacular. And she immediately began praising me, think, saying how well written it was. She thought I wrote it. She's like, this is so great. I, Thanks, I corrected her. I was like, well, I didn't write this, but it kind of got me thinking like I could do this. You know, mm -hmm. I could blog at least to keep my grandparents in the loop of what I was doing and where their food was coming from. So I just like started blogging and initially I just had my blog. I was on Facebook, um, but then I soon was on Instagram snapchat for a while i tried my hand at twitter it's not for me mm -hmm. um leave but, that to erin she's a pro yeah so primarily <laughs> just instagram's my jam did you mention your your email oh and I, yeah i've got my I, yeah i mean that's important to talk yeah. about right yeah. i have a you can subscribe to my email list and i um send out a weekly email with my weekly meal plan, farm shenanigans, whatever else I'm into. It's always different. I hope it's fun. I hope people like it. I put time into it. So mm -hmm. I fucking oh <laughs> not to say that. It was quiet. It's quiet. It's quiet. <laughs> We said the only rules today were to watch the F bombs. And they stared Looked straight right at, at me. Her. I, yeah. That's okay. Sorry, YouTube. Oh, yeah. podcast you're probably going to hear it too because I'm going to forget to edit it out but um <laughs> what uh how do you find time to do all this like do you are you have to be like a very organized person do you I'm, have a schedule like are, are you just like I have time right now I'm just going to crank this out I'm just gonna yeah you and I have kind of chatted about this this weekend and I and yourself are the same mm -hmm. we don't schedule things out. We don't necessarily make time. We kind of fly by the seat of our pants. Yep. Um, I always kind of maybe go into the week with ideas of things I want to share or talk about, mm -hmm. but really what I'm doing is just whatever's happening on the farm is what inspires me to talk about. Um, and this, these past few weeks, it's been February. It's been depressing. We're ready for spring. I've been totally uninspired. And I think you can like kind of see that in my social media. It's hard. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't I feel like that's a lot of people lately. Like there's just not as, I don't know. You're just like in the lull of winter and you're kind of yeah. over it. Yeah. I'm over not, it. Someday I hope to be one of those people that like batches content and they're, they're like, oh yeah, you just pick one day a week and just hammer it all out. And I'm like, um, no, I get like How? five minutes before I pick up my kids and I'll make a reel really quick. That's, yeah. That's yeah. My idea of I will say I do have days where I have like batched a couple of reels or like and it, it feels good. Mm -hmm. I it, just, I, it feels powerful. I like think of the idea and then I just have to do it right away. Otherwise yeah, I'll forget, I forget about it. it. Yeah. Me I too. should like write it down in my planner. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I am the least organized person. If you couldn't tell from like our podcast, you can tell that we're not organized. Beck and I aren't. No, no. Okay. I won't try to defend ourselves. No. <laughs> uh, but I did get a planner this year. I actually have two, Ooh. one for work and one for, um, like not work. <laughs> <laughs> so like my one for work, I, I try to write down what we do every day or like what we're doing during the week. And then I'm trying to write down like the temperatures every day too. So then like next year I can look back and be like, oh, this week we were sanding like X, Y, and Z or like, oh, we were flooding on this day because it was this cold. We took the water off when it was, you know, like this temperature, you know, that's things like cool. that. I just trying to awesome keep like to look yeah. back at. Yeah. Yeah. Just trying to keep like a daily log because, you know, like my dad knows all this stuff from the back of his hand, but I don't. So, you know, I'm Start always reminded. Yeah, or, yeah. Yeah. Like, you know, you never know how much time you have. So like what happens if my dad is gone? Mm -hmm. I'm getting kind of deep here, but like, I would have no idea what to do. And if I have this log, hopefully yeah, I'll have some sort of hmm. guidance. Interesting. Um, yeah. Yeah. So that's been kind of helping me stay organized, but like what I really like about your emails, you plan your, your meals out, your dinners. Well, food is very week. important to me. <laughs> food is that, very important to me. And like you stick with it. How do you, uh, that I, that, I tried, I tried like having set meals, but then like the day comes and you're just like, 
eh, or you like get stuck at work yeah. and then you're like, I don't really feel like. Doing I don't, I don't feel like spending that much time mm. making dinner. Why don't we just like go get something instead of having this stuff that I already have everything bought for and just push that. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, it doesn't help. I don't live close to any mm-hmm. restaurants or fast food. So I don't have like that fallback, which helps. Um, and like I said, I freaking love food and I love to cook. And that is like my favorite part of the day when like everybody's home and they're just like chilling, playing, and I get to be in the kitchen and cook and have my drink. Um, <laughs> and the whiskey. That's it's the whiskey. Does it. <laughs> it sounds, it sounds nice. Not, it's not always pleasurable because I am the mother of two toddlers, but I don't know. I like each weekend I go get the groceries I need for my meal plan. And for the most part, I stick to it. I do try to like make my meal plans flexible. Like I know which days are going to be tough, which days I need to like, it's got to be a crock pot thing or an mm-hmm. instant pot thing, or which days I have more time to focus on. And I also try to switch it up. So I'm like, I try to be healthy, you know, it's mm-hmm. like, sometimes it might be chicken and a vegetable. And then the next day it's pasta. And then the next day it's healthy again. And, um, I don't know. Food is good, man. <laughs> so when you, I know you have to like feed calves more at night now, is yeah. that affecting how you're doing dinner? Or do you just kind of like prep it before you feed calves? I prep it before. So it's usually on the nights I have to feed calves. It, that's like sheet pan dinners, crock pot dinners, something Tom can just put in the oven or press a button on and not screw up. <laughs> good job, Tom. <laughs> yes, kudos to Tom. <laughs> we know he's an avid listener. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Even though we never got him his crown. Oh, he probably forgot. Now you brought oh, it up shoot. and he's going to hear. Ooh. Just well, write it off. <laughs> write it off. <laughs> just buy one on your way home. I'll Venmo you. Okay. <laughs> um, let's see. I feel like I have another question for you. We might have to circle back. Okay. So get out of here. Yep. I, you know here. what? She's empty. <laughs> Brittany. Come on down. You are the next contestant. <laughs> oh, did you say what your handles are, Annalise? Where can people find you? I am Why am I yelling? <laughs> modern day farm. <laughs> <laughs> this is so dumb. <laughs> modern day farm chick on Facebook, mod farm chick on Instagram. Mm-hmm. And then on Instagram is where you can like subscribe to my email list. Oh, yeah, I remember. Oh, Dan Fields, we'll, we'll come back to that. We'll talk about it's that with you. There. Brittany, hi. Oh, hi. Welcome to the podcast. Well, thanks. I you feel never, like I'm like starstruck. <laughs> you've never been on before. No, no. First yeah. time, yeah. first time yeah. caller, yeah. long time listener. <laughs> okay, at least you're honest. <laughs> so we're going to keep this short and sweet. So hi. Hi. <laughs> Tell the people who you are, where you're from, what you do. Yeah. Well, I'm Brittany from Wisconsin, small town, <laughs> just north of Green Bay. Uh, I used to work full time as her- a herdswoman on a couple farms. Herdswoman. Ca- yeah. Woo! I'm a calf manager. Um, but due to daycare situations, uh, I am now at home 90% of the time with my boys. I love it. Sometimes I hate it because <laughs> I, it's, it's been an adjustment. I've always mm-hmm. never pictured myself. I've pictured myself as a mother, but never as a stay. Mm-hmm. I've been like, I do go crazy, but I'm trying. I feel like I'm transitioning a lot better than I thought. But I think you're killing it. Yeah. Oh, thanks. Yes. Yeah. It's it's, it's still it's still we're going going on a yeah a year now doing it, but I'm still like can't believe I am doing it. <laughs> so let's okay. Let's talk about that because I feel like we've talked about it. So, but maybe like coming from your perspective, how did you handle going from, you know, being so active in the farm to just all of a sudden, like kind of just cold Turkey stopping almost. Well, it was what mentality mentality through that whole process. Yeah. I have my therapy calves in the back. It actually did help because our second son was born in the end of January and it was like the coldest week of January. So I was kind of like, this is nice. <laughs> this is nice. <laughs> <laughs> but then um well it was it was kind of a weird situation. Like I knew from like January through September the plan was for me to be home because then my second son could join my oldest in daycare. 
but then our daycare had to just close like Memorial Day weekend came and she just closed and then that was when I was like well shit good choice good choice of work <laughs> Because then I'm like, it was like, you were, you're we trying to figure out like, okay, let's find daycare. But then I was like, well, I don't really have a job lined to pay up. For it. Yeah. And then it was like, we'd look into centers and they tell you how much I'm like, well, this job I would find, I'm probably going to hate. And it's just going to pay for daycare. It doesn't cover like gas to get mm-hmm. to and from, um, it's hard to get into daycare. Yes. With an infant. Yeah. yeah. Well, two, they're like, well, we can take your toddler. I'm like, this still doesn't help me. It's almost would yeah. be like, it was still going to be like a full year again before. Um, so it was like panic mode in the summer. Cause it was just like, well, can we afford for me to be home? And I knew like I'm Rodan and Fields consultant as well. And it's like, it, it was like good business, but it's like, it's not, was it money nearly like what I was making full time, but at least it was something I could contribute to. Um, so then I just started focusing more like, okay, the boys are my life kind of thing. This is my life now. And then, okay. I also need to focus better on Rodan and fields and how, and like it's sales. So each month, one month, you have a really good month and the next month, like, well, this is going to buy just our groceries. So, um, and my husband, I was surprised how well he transitioned to it because I would joke before, like, I'm going to be a stay at home mom. Like on days I was just like sick because I used to drive 45 minutes to work, get with the boys or with Hank. And he's like, you can be a stay at home mom, but we're only eating bologna. And I'm like, mm, no, but <laughs> yeah. So, um, but no, he's adjusted well and it helps like his job is very, he's got a very good job too. So. Yeah, it's weird when you think like graduating college, like this was never Mm -hmm. the dream. And here I am and I'm like, it's working for us. And I actually couldn't, I think about like going back full time and it is nice my days away from the boys, but then now I get two days with them. So balance, I guess. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, You talked about Rodan and Fields. Mm -hmm. How long have you been doing that? And like, but just explain your situation, how, oh, how it's going. So yeah, I started it two years ago and that's basically what brought me to like be more social media active because like, or active on social media. Cause like I had Instagram and I think like I downloaded it when I was like a sophomore in college mm-hmm. because it had cool filters and I like didn't understand it. And then, <laughs> um, cause I joined with Annalise. So I'm just kind of like, what do I, like, I want to do this, but like, what the hell do I do? Mm-hmm. And she's like, well, you're good on Facebook, like bring it to Instagram. So it was like, <laughs> now I look back, like if memories pop up and like the archive, I'm like, oh my, like oh, not my. saying I'm a pro right now, but <laughs> yeah. there's a lot of archived uh, pictures. Yeah. Yeah. Pictures, like, yeah. Like when you got like five filters on it and then the big old border around yeah. it, you're like, what what, what, was, I yes. what is this yes it doesn't even that look like a human so <laughs> yeah it's not even a human anymore but yeah so um and it's been like it's like sounds cliche kind of but like Rodan and Fields is kind of life-changing for me because it brought me to Instagram and I went no I'd only know Annalise I went no like any of you and I think that's helped me to transition to stay-at-home mom it's like I have a new line of network like I have my core friends like true mm-hmm. But then it's like, this is like an outlet to like, when you're having your down days, it's like, I could reach out to someone other than my mom, who's just going to yeah. like agree with anything I say, where it's like, I could, Annalise or any of you guys just feel like we have like that one day you and I are like, I don't know why we had kids. Like, this is just like, it's just nice to have an outlet with someone like kind of outside of your original circle. So mm-hmm. I truly appreciate that. And that gets you too. Like, mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I was like, Jeff's like, how do you have friends you've never met? <laughs> just like, how do you not have friends? Because <laughs> yeah, it's like, it is weird. It's like, like I said, it's kind of like starstruck. So like, you're, you're all real. Like, look at you with legs. And this is how tall you are. Like, so yeah. Still, yeah. Isn't it? <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. So, so yeah. 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 That was, that was so funny when you asked, like, how tall are you? Because you seem super tall. Well, I just figured we were the same height. I don't know. No, not not nope. even close. No, I'm, yeah, I'm tall. Yeah, I'm not. So that's that's always kind of fun to hear. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if people wanted to follow you, if they're looking for some good skincare, where can they find you at? Oh, I am at according to underscore Brittany. <laughs> 
how do you spell your name, Brittany? Because there's oh, like yes. 12 different ways to I know. spell it. It's the T-T-A-N-Y, the right way. <laughs> for all the good mom advice yeah yes. to Brittany. I try yeah I'm definitely in the learning of what to be consistent what to because I like to dabble a lot of things like mm-hmm. like being a mom but I still like my cows so and like and I guess I like to clean. good at cleaning yeah yep. I try yeah, I, I try to clean good at cleaning and reminding <laughs> me to wash my wash machine yeah tide packets wash your wash machines yeah. once a month clean and the your, filters your, your dishwasher <laughs> filter what, yeah. washer if it has one yeah the speed <laughs> queens don't no speed queen yeah, unless someone knows tell me because i want to find filter. yeah but yeah that's yeah i just dabble in well it's not really exciting stuff but it's everyday stuff that yeah relatable stuff. Very, very relatable weird. very entertaining so mm-hmm. if you're not following Brittany, go give her a follow she's definitely worth it so well thanks <laughs> Get the hell out of here, Tessa. Okay. You're in the hot seat. <laughs> well, well <done. laughs> hello, Tessa. Hello, welcome back. You've been Ooh, at oh, oh. Uh, <laughs> this is a commercial break now. Yeah. <laughs> <Should be. laughs> this uh, episode sponsored, Not kind sponsored of, by Bush Light. almost, <laughs> almost sponsored. Working on it. So, welcome back. Hi. Hi. If you uh, didn't listen to Tessa's episode, she was in season one. She was probably like our first, one of our first, one of our first guests. Like yeah. Two, two years that? ago. Jeez Louise. I know. So um, Tessa, give the people a quick little introduction if they didn't listen to your first interview. Who are you? What do you do? Hi, my name's Tessa. Uh, my husband and I manage a small show cow dairy farm in Fithian, Illinois. We're right between Champaign and Danville. Um, We make cheese from our milk. We sell raw milk. um, And I'm also an emergency room nurse. How the heck do you do it? You know, every day at a time. That's it. It's a lot (laughs) of caffeine. Just running on caffeine and bush light. Yeah. Yeah. So how is your schedule? Like what what does your typical week look like for you? Um, It depends on how much I want to ruin my life and pick up extra shifts. (laughs) Um, But my shift is 7A to 7P. So I get up around 4.45, go to the farm with Devin. I have to leave at 6.35 exactly to walk in the door at 6.58. Um, So hopefully everything goes well. And if it's not, Devin has to clean up the mess. Uh, Cows get out, sorry. Sometimes it happens. Um, But other than that, then I'm home. He milks and finishes chores the days that I'm working. But if I don't have to work at the hospital, I'm there. I'm exhausted just listening to that. You are just a superhero. Um, so That's good stories. Yeah. We won't talk about them. But. I think we should. That should be a whole other episode. We'll we'll say that for part two, where we just kind of <laughs> chit chat. Uh, but yeah, it should be in our well, our group chat. <laughs> okay. Maybe maybe that's what next episode will be. Just reading yeah, through I our group chat. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so let's, let's kind of circle back to the creamery. What, uh, just talk about it. <laughs> okay. How's that for us? Um, we make cheese. So my husband, Devin, and I just manage it for the Ludwig family. Um, our owner's son, it was his dream to always make cheese from his dad's show cows. They turned an old hay barn into the creamery. And the day he was supposed to start making or the day before he was supposed to start making cheese, he was killed in a car accident. So if we, if you see anything, the Jake's line, that's all memory of him. Um, but we just make really small batches right now. We're not making any, any, making any right now. It's kind of our slow season. So we start picking back up around like March, April, cause we have around like the show season as well. Um, so we'll start again pretty soon. So how many different types of cheeses do you have right now? Right now we have about eight. Um, we'll start again with mozzarella and curds in the summer because those we want to be as fresh as possible. Mm -hmm. Um, But other than that, we go up to like four different kinds of curds and mozzarella. What is your personal favorite cheese? Mm, I really like our Jake special herb or our Sangamon. (laughs) 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 Our Gouda was a favorite Mm -hmm. this weekend. Yep. You made us a charcuterie board and you had like four different? Four Gouda, Kickapoo, special herb. 
cheddar. Cheddar. Yeah. yeah. White cheddar. I like the Gouda. The Gouda. Yeah, the Gouda, Gouda was good. It is a good one. It is Gouda. It is Gouda. Oh, geez. Sorry. Gouda. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> when did you start working at the creamery? How long have you been there? I've been there. I used to work there um, under these two people, Mandy and Eddie. They're great. They're now at a different farm in Wisconsin. Um, so I was there for two years. There was two managers in between. And then my husband and I, Devin, took over in October of 2018. Okay. So you've been on social media for a little while. Yeah. I really started trying to do more like three years ago um, while I was in nursing school, which didn't really work out. Um, <laughs> but like I busy or something? No, yeah, you I tried. I mean, there's days where like I try and keep my stories going every day. I always try to do something, but there's days where I just I just it's too much and in the winter when it's so gross outside I don't want to post a picture from the summer and be like look at my farm it's sunny when everyone's like no it's it's not <laughs> so, it's sad and depressing. I don't know it's hard to do both but I'm chugging away I'm trying do you have a plan on how long you want to stay in nursing I I love it I like emergency medicine a lot um you'll never you never know what you're gonna see <laughs> Every day is an adventure, that's for sure. Um, but I'll try to do both as long as I can. Plus the benefits. Yeah, can't beat that. Nice yeah, no, they're pretty good. It's nice. It's <laughs> nice to have, we were talking about this earlier, like outside income besides a dairy farm because mm -hmm. that can be hard. Yeah. Um, and I have the ability to also like pick up extra shifts if I want to, which is a lot of, you can't just really do that for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That chair looks broken. Awkward. What's chair. broken? That chair. What? Oh my God. Do you see it? Yeah. Broken. I thought you said rocking. I was like, <laughs> stop so, it. I'm yeah. Stopping. Last night we were talking ghost stories and Annalise was not happy. Was not, not well. happy. No. She needed to watch like cartoons before she went to bed we or something. So Tessa, uh, where can, where can people find you? Where can they find your cheese? Um, you can buy our cheese online. We ship anywhere. Um, we've even shipped to Alaska. Um, www.ludwigfarmsaidcreamery.com. And my Instagram is Ludwig Farms underscore Tessa, where we have a Facebook Ludwig Farms Ed Creamery. I'm 100% ordering that Gouda. Like, yeah, that Gouda I is. Mean, there's more in the fridge. I brought a lot. Well, I'll order. order. Okay, cool. Thanks. <laughs> that works. And if you want to hear more of Tessa's story, we did have an episode with her, I think in season one, one of our first episodes. So if you're interested in listening to that, go download that. Yeah. Thanks. But uh, thanks. Don't judge us for the quality of... Uh... That was a long time it ago. It was a long yeah, time ago. We were, we're still pretty new at everything. Not that we're any better, like, now yeah. <laughs> are we kidding um yeah i think that's gonna be where we wrap this one up for yeah. now and uh stay tuned for maybe a part two if we can stay awake long enough we might need a drink break and come back in a few minutes so thanks for listening and we'll see you next week bye